the Riese Mythological Mast went into operation in 1957. It's 123 meters high and it's a very essential part of the Danish Wind Atlas and it's also used in the European Wind Atlas. In 1977 the authorities wanted a Wind Atlas for both calculating the wind energy potential out of all of Denmark but also to be used for placing of uh, single wind turbines. And we, together with the Meteorological Institute, developed then the Danish Wind Atlas and what later became the, the Wind Atlas method. After finishing the Danish Wind Atlas in 1981, we were asked to lead a European project to make a European Wind Atlas. And during eight years from 81 to 89, we further developed the methodology from the Danish Wind Atlas, leading to a method called WASP. And we also published a book, the European Wind Atlas in 1989, which has all the data for Europe. And this was translated to four main European languages. We continued developing the method by including uh, more complete models that could be used more accurately in uh, mountainous areas. In the late 80s, when we prepared the wind atlas, we had to digitize by following height contours manually. And as you can see, I have to work for many hours to get uh, a map or part of a map into the system. In the beginning of 2015, after seven years of preparation, the new European Wind Atlas was started. It includes all 28 EU countries. The Global Wind Atlas, which is published now, is covering, as it says, the whole globe, but with a rather coarse resolution. We can zoom in on a, an area and we can, for example, say a wind machine is 100 meters and we get a map of the area. The WASP methodology, the Wind Atlas methodology, is used everywhere in the world. If you see a windmill, you can guess that probably someone has used this methodology to evaluate the economy of that particular site.